So, we are um, coming up next this Sunday in front of us, if I'm still here. I, August 7th will be the ninth Sunday after Pentecost this year. And um, so we'll, let's open with the intro it. The intro it for today is taken from Psalm 147. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody to our God. And the lyre. He covers the heavens with clouds and he prepares rain for the earth. He makes grass grow on the hills. He gives to the beasts their food. And to the young ravens their cry. His delight is not in the strength of the horse. Nor his pleasure in the legs of man. The Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him. In those who steadfast love. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody to our God. On the lyre. And our call for the for this week, for Sunday. Almighty and merciful God, it is by your grace that we live as your people who offer acceptable service. Grant that we may walk by faith and not by sight in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Okay, um, so you had uh, some things you've been thankful for this week. Anything God blessed you with? Thankful. We're supposed to be thankful for our health, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, health. I'll be thankful for a couple more days of cooler weather. Cool. Yeah, that'll oh, be I, nice. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. But it's going right back up to one or so. Well, um, it's it will come back. Seems to be that even 95 doesn't feel quite so hot after 105. Yeah, no, <laughs> 85, we might need jackets. <laughs> well, I get too cool with my cool on. Yeah. I wear a sweater in the house. Be able to take a break from the mm -hmm. air conditioning. Go, out, go outside and warm up. <laughs> yeah. I'm thankful for the fact that as Americans, we can practice whichever religion we choose to. Mm -hmm. We can come to church without being persecuted for it. Yeah, there's, and there's not a, a state church that you have to attend or, or those sorts of things, like some churches, some town, places. Yeah, I'm thankful I got to spend a few days with my wife. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and... Uh, and thankful my brother, I will see my brother-in-law, if not here, then in eternity. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. So do you know where you're going, when you're going down there? No, they, he's still doing pretty well, so he's working through his list of visitors. And so when it gets closer, which I'm assuming that without dialysis, it, it'll, it'll start driving pretty quick once it does. So, yeah. So, so he can't take dialysis or what? Um, I, he's not during, oh. since he's on hospice. So oh, I don't, I, I don't know if that's normal during hospice or he, I mean, he can't move around or drive. I don't know. I don't know that anybody would be able to get him into a car. You know, I'm not sure how they would get him there except for ambulance service. And then it's, that's. Yeah, that starts to get a little silly, but uh, if you say you're ready, then it's then you're ready. So. Well, when you get on hospice, isn't that you're really close to the end when mm -hmm. they put you on hospice? Yeah, although for some people it can still be months, mm -hmm. but. Yes. Uh, you can be on hospice for up to six months, I think it is. Well, they they used to be the rule. Huh. I didn't know we that. don't know what the good Lord has in mind. They. Yeah. They don't kick people off at six yeah. months because unless you've improved in your health, like dear Martha, they thought when she went home from the hospital last year at Christmas time that she was going to be in hospice and she just kept getting better and better. Yeah. 
back to normal. Well, I've heard a lot <laughs> of people fired. praise hospice. I've heard a lot of people praise it. it really, yeah. It really helped them a lot. It, yeah, it can be a big yeah. help. Although, you don't necessarily get all the help you might want or expect, but you, it is a big help. It is a huge help. Mm. So. Because the family doesn't really know what to do a lot of times. Right, so. yeah. Well, which one are we going to start on today? Um... Let's see. Well, we could start with Genesis. That's a short one. Genesis 15, 1 through 6. Move this back just a little. So, yeah, I'll open this up in case I need any help from the notes. Genesis 15. Well, I've got a group of readers, so we can go one verse at a time. Marilyn, you want to start? Oh. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Fear not, Abram, I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But oh. Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless in the heir of my house, Eliezer of Damascus. Elias. Yeah. And Abram said, Behold, you have given me no offspring, and a member of my household will be my heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. This man shall not be your heir, for your very own son shall be your heir. And he brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven and number the stars, if you are able to number them. Then he said to him, So shall your offspring be. And he believed the Lord, and he counted it to him as righteousness. All right. Uh, so, okay. Uh, so, is that the same as Abraham? I've always mm -hmm. wondered. Yeah. yeah. Uh, God's covenant, is it? Uh, when, I'm, I'm looking ahead just a little bit. Uh, chapter 17, when he's 99 years old, the covenant of circumcision, when he changes his name to Abraham, oh, exactly. from exalted father to uh, father of a multitude. Mm -hmm. um, but, right, oftentimes we just think of him as Abraham. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, it's easier to say. Right, Abram, for us, right, we're used to Abraham. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so... Uh, the Lord comes to Abraham in a vision. And the, the first thing he says is, Fear not. Yeah, right? Fear not. Um, I shall be your shield and your reward shall be great. And then we see that Abraham is, all, is <laughs> we'll say fearful or maybe anxious. From the gospel lesson, I got the word anxious in my head. But uh, Abraham's like, hey, you told me you're, we were going to have kids, and it's getting older, longer and longer, and we still don't have kids, and how could, you know, this just doesn't happen. Uh, you know, I mean, he's older than you guys, most of you. <laughs> Ray said it wasn't too late for me. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we're all able if we have the right plumbing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so uh, but at this point, he said, and he believed the Lord. At the in, right after the end and the Lord's promise, he and that believed the Lord. It still was a long time, but it said, and he believed the Lord. Right. Um, and and he counted it to his righteousness. Right. Very important. And this Saint Paul t highlights this also. Um, that he, he had faith. He believed the Lord, and the Lord credited it to him as righteousness so, to show that even the Old Testament was not because you were born as a son of Adam or as a son of Noah or as a son of, even as a son of Abraham. Not all the sons of Abraham were saved, only those who trusted in the Lord, who believed in the Lord, uh, trusted, you know, as we focus our, what the, the important part is trust oh i know yeah there's the god out there but do you trust in him 
<laughs> Even the devil knows there's a God, but he doesn't trust in him. Um, and it's not, and it's not uh, making a decision. It's, it's trusting. And, and even our faith is a gift from God. So, um, but, you know, but this is a crisis, a bit of a crisis. You know, it's similar. It's uh, kind of similar to what we read last week with Solomon. You know, Solomon was worried. Who's going to take over my stuff? Right? Who's going to inherit all this? Is he going to be a wise person or not a wise person? Uh, it doesn't say we don't know anything about Eliezer, but he's he's some sort of a, for whatever reason, uh, he's part of Abram's house. I don't know if a relative or the chief servant or what he you know what's his role that he would be the. He would inherit everything, but uh, but he's in line, and um, I'm sure if he's in line, that doesn't mean that Abraham really dislikes him or hates him or something. But he was hoping for something more, right? A real true son, an offspring, to carry on the family name and <laughs> Achilles and and Sarah's. Yeah. Not somebody else. And and I don't I don't have that myself, but and I'm I'm content with that. But uh, but it, most of you have been through that, and it's something special, isn't it? It is responsibility. Responsibility. What What's really nice is the grandkids. That's your reward. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As I say, with our name, it left with my 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 maiden name. It left with my um, my brother was the only Bronquist, and he only had three daughters. Yeah, yeah. One of the daughters and grandson took the name. Huh. We'll see. As a middle name or a? And they no, they changed their name. Okay. So, Decided to go with that name. To go with that. Yes. Okay, so. But now she married, but he still continues. With okay. Her. So I mean, it isn't quite the same, but I guess. <laughs> well, why do we? Why do we feel like we need somebody to take on our name? Well, I don't know, but that was. <laughs> but that, it, that, it, that, <laughs> it was important to them. It is so important to a lot of people. I it was just I just. <laughs> Her name was Jones, and she wanted to have a son because she wanted to carry on that name. Jones. <laughs> this is a lot of Joneses around, oh, yeah. and Smiths, yeah. and yeah. 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 But now, that um, name is to start with a K. Cronquist. Uh, what nationality is that? I remember Swedish. Oh, Swedish. Okay. Chris. Oh, yeah. We were from a Scandinavian community also. Mm -hmm. There was all three Swedes, Norwegian, and Danish. Cronquist. Where did where'd you live then? We lived on the on a farm, could be kind of close to Eatonville, Washington. Oh, south of Tacoma. there. Okay. Huh. So Abram is, uh, yeah, afraid. Well, the Lord says, "Do not be afraid." Is he afraid? Anxious? Um, he's definitely he's definitely worried about this. Lord, you said. Yeah, very worried. We re we really want we really we still want somebody. We're, we you said it was going to happen and it hasn't happened yet. What's wrong, Lord? Um, so, but uh, he got the Lord reassures him. No, nope, it's not going to be that person. There will be some your own son, and it's, we're kind of reading backwards because a couple of weeks ago during church. We had the three visitors, our readings were the three visitors, and um, Abraham brought all the food to them and served them, but, and then we skipped over the part where he promises that when he returns in a year, then Sarah will be with child, or have given birth to a child, and then, uh, and then they go on to, then we read the part about how they went on to Sodom and Gomorrah, and, and the, Abraham was praying, uh, pleading, Petitioning the Lord, you know, not to destroy the city if there's some righteous people there. Um, we so uh, it does. We're, 
So we're kind of, as we do with the Old Testament, skip around a little bit. At least we're still back with Abraham. But um, what a promise in verse 5, huh? Not only will you have a son yourself. That's what I was saying, but yeah. such a vast number of, of descendants. More, yeah. Descendants. Yeah. Descendants. He's going to have a whole start to be pretty old, isn't he? He did, I, I don't remember, I don't have it memorized of how, how old it was exactly, but... Um, it doesn't make any difference as far as I'm concerned. But person. how many children did he have? One. One? Ooh. Abraham? Abraham? Yeah, he had just one, didn't he? Didn't he just have Isaac? What about Ishmael? Oh. I was going to say, I think he had some, but they were not. But they were Sarah's. Not Sarah's, not, you know, they were... They were Hagar. Not as legitimate as... <laughs> they were less than legitimate. Yeah. I don't want to say unleg illegitimate, but uh, less than legitimate. Uh, now, later on with Jacob, when Jacob sleeps with the, with, and with the concubines, the handmaidens, those children are given full inheritance rights, uh, or equal inheritance rights, you know, with the other children. But, uh, but God said no. And, and you even see... Abram even loved Ishmael, and when Ishmael was, uh, uh, before I, Isaac was born, he, he, Abraham said, well, what, this, isn't this boy good enough? And, uh, and God said, no, 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 it, it's you and Sarah, you and Sarah, I will still have one. So, they, and then after Sarah died, Abraham had an, another wife or wives and had even more children. So, even if you just look at the children of the promise, if Isaac and Jacob and, you know, and, the, and the 12 tribes of Israel, you know, then, I mean, it's still a, a huge number of people, but, um, but Ishmael was the father of all the Arab uh, people. Uh, Esau it was the father of the Edomites uh, in Jordan, uh, to modern Jordan. Um, so if, if you expand even beyond, in a, in a physical sense, he was the father of a wide group of people today. Um, Abram was? Yeah. So all of the fighting going on in the Middle East is just family fights that have just been dragging out for thousands of years. They should just get over it. <laughs> yeah, it'd be nice if they could get over it. Uh, but... Uh, um, was numerous as the stars above, and but that seems unfathomable to me. Yeah, and then and and the important verse wrapping this up: He believed the Lord, and the Lord counted it, credited to him as righteousness. Not that he was righteous in anything that he did, but he trusted, and even that trust. I think in a New Testament sense, we would say that he had the help of the Holy Spirit. He didn't do it on his own. Uh, how could a man at his own at that age believe that that he would still have children through with his older wife? So it, he believed in in miracles in God, and uh, so um, so in, even in these short six just six verses, we still have. Quite a bit to think about, huh? Um, so, anxious. I, I think that fits with the, the gospel lesson. Do not be anxious, Abraham. Um, I would take care of it. You're getting older, but it's not too late for the Lord to do something. Right? It's never too late for the Lord. No. All things are possible. Patience. Yeah? Not that, that I'm expecting any children from... <laughs> no new ones. Well, let's go to Luke. A friend of our daughter's. He's 65. Mm-hmm. And by, I don't know what you call it, he became the father of a five-day-old child, which was his wife's sister, who was a drug addict, and they had to have a place for it. Oh. And they took, and they took, they, they're taking him. Oh, that was and nice. I don't know how old she is, but she's not young either. So they're adopting? They're adopting. Yeah. 
Well, so, yeah, adoption. Well, and even men, there was. I mean, it's, yeah, and we don't, we think of that as being pretty old to have babies. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, hard to keep up. Yeah. Well, they must have a big heart to there, get a kid like that. But uh, he had never had any children, yeah. There was a, one of the presidents of the United States remarried at an older age, over 60 or 70 years old, and had several children with his second wife um, back in the 1800s. And uh, I think I saw a, a video, uh, somebody had done an interview of uh, re, uh, a movie or whatever, record, you know, recorded an interview with his last surviving so, per, you know, child in the eight, 1850s or something <laughs> that the family had spanned from his birth around 1800 to, to 1950 because <laughs> yeah because his dad had had children so late in the life but uh, so it, it it's naturally a little bit more like possible for men than women right but still uh, exhausting if yeah. you're well, yeah, she never had children. Even, you know, I'm not even 60, and I'm just exhausted thinking of trying to keep up with a bunch of kids. Yeah. And, unless you have other older kids to babysit and to teach them. Well, they were supposed to be over <laughs> the 18th. They come over to Cooley every year. Yeah. And he doesn't think he's going to be able to come. Oh. Well... As you can still love and well, be a father yeah, to a child. Is, we just, we were, yeah. I think that's so cool. Our, so I mean, many drug babies just get shuffled around. Yes, and that's why I mean, they were pretty vehement. Yeah, yeah, I, I mean... That, we didn't even know the sister was going to have the... I mean, she'd just been completely away from her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and I still... But that could still be an option for... Yeah, and for a baby. Us, if if there was a situation or what something happened, Tanya and I could still adopt. There's always an option in life. <laughs> uh, Apparently. Yeah. So. Um, you know, you just talked about not being anxious, and here we are in Luke, mm -hmm. and the heading is "Do not be anxious." Right. I I looked ahead that a little is bit. So cool. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, my mother was like that. She was anxious about a lot of things. Yeah. I didn't inherit that trait, thank goodness, because that would be really hard to have that, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Well, it's stressful. You know. It takes I, life off, years yeah, off your life. I worry about things that might never happen, you know. It's, it's just kind of a trait that she had. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we do want to, I mean, there's being prepared for anything on one hand, a little Boy Scout motto, motto but, but worrying, okay, do what you can and then deal with what happens as it happens, right? You know, uh, you to be more concerned than worry. But, right, anxiety is, is a constant kind of level of fear, worry, yeah. Uh, and it's not good for our heart. Yeah. Yeah, she did have heart trouble. She only lived to be 67. Yeah. So, yeah, do not be anxious. Luke 22 through 34. Luke 12, chapter 12, 22 through 34. Dort, I think you start us. And he said to his disciples, Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat, nor about your body. What you would put on. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. Mm -hmm. Now that covers pretty much everything, huh? <laughs> don't, don't worry about your life, yeah. uh, what to eat, or what you will put on your clothes, or anything about your body. Um, because life is more. more. Than food. More than clothing. How true. Yeah. Uh, and think the Lord of, always works everything out. Yeah. He does. Uh, how much time do we spend worrying about food or clothing? Too uh, much. Yeah. 
Uh, what am I going to wear? What am I going to eat? What? <laughs> uh, What's the weather going to be like? <laughs> uh, okay. Now he's got some examples for us to think about. In Maryland, 24. Consider the ravens. They neither sow nor reap. They have neither storehouse nor barn, and yet God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? And then you are not able to do as, as small a thing as that. Why are you so anxious about the rich? Yeah, in fact, as we were just saying, by being anxious, you not only don't add time to your life, you actually take it off of your life. Yes. You, uh, you, you poison your heart and, you, and uh, cause it to run fast for no reason. And um, Hurry up and wait. Yeah. Yeah. So, so just focus on the waiting a bit more and not <laughs> less of the hurrying up. So, yeah. It's not, there's a lot of things that are outside our control. Even, even farmers go out and sow their fields. And, you know, farmers are, are one of the people that really have to trust in the Lord, don't they? They have a yes. lot of patience. <laughs> not all of them are believers, but, but uh, you have to do your, just do your best and hope that you get rain at the right time and hope you planted your crops the right, you hope the weather is right for the whole time, you know, through the whole growing season. Um, and one, one frost, one night can, can make trouble, can it? Yes. <laughs> uh, one rain at the wrong time can cause a bunch of trouble for farmers. So, uh, but, uh, don't, so lots of things they can worry about, but don't even, don't even bother. Don't worry about it. Um, Okay, then the next one, consider... Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon, in all his glory, was not arrayed like one of these. 28. But if God so clothes the grass, <clears throat> which is alive in the field today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will, you, will he clothe you, O you of little faith? And do not seek what you are to eat and what you are to drink, nor be worried. For all the nations of the world seek after these things, and your Father knows that you need them. Instead, seek his kingdom, and these things will be added to you. Yeah. Now, I, we sang that song last week because it kind of went along with last week's, <laughs> too. <laughs> uh, these do kind of build on each other you know, the rich fool um, and this one new about and uh, and in Colossians last week think about things above not on things below seek ye first the kingdom of God so um, this one even more specifically seek his kingdom and all these things will be added unto you Allelu, Allelu, Alleluia so uh, so, what do you think about the the flowers of the field, lilies? They are some of the more beautiful than most anything human made, aren't they? Mm -hmm. and, the flowers are beautiful. And how long do most of them last? <laughs> it's a season. Yeah, one day. Maybe. One day. Yeah. The Is their best? The flowers go away really fast. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. At this time of the year, it's a day. If it's so hot hot and dry yeah um, at their best under the right conditions maybe a week mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think the wild ones probably don't last as long as the tame ones do they the wildflowers don't last as long like if you pick them if you pick them no probably not mm -hmm. yeah. um, although they can be more hardy than the, you know the, than the tame ones I think they probably are um, because it depends upon Mother Nature completely. Because I know that, like up at the cabin where that is, if we've had a rainy spring, we get beautiful wildflowers. There are times when it's too hot, 
You get none. Oh. Yeah. So it depends. We're depending completely on the Lord for yeah. these things. And that also food crop. Right. We, uh, we have the service berries or June berry bushes around here. Yes. Um, the, the wild ones have to be always able to, uh, in almost any condition, be able to survive. Yes. Where the tame ones get used to, have gotten used to us protecting them and taking and care of them. And them yeah. Water them, mm -hmm. cover them if it's going to be freezing. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the wild fruit is, is a little tougher, but usually not as tasty or as uh, big or uh, for the flowers, not as, not as, deli not as intricate and beautiful, but um, why did God make them flowers so beautiful? He likes to make the earth look great. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, he looks for us, to us, for pleasure. Mm -hmm. He bring us pleasure. Yeah. God enjoys the flowers too. Sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It'll be nice to ask him someday. Yeah. <laughs> that's a question we can ask. Yeah. Well, that's a that is a question. If if there was no God, why is there beauty? Couldn't flowers have survived? Why why would aren't they just gray? Why uh why are they colorful? Why are they beautiful? Why do they smell good? Um you know, if it's all about evolution and by accident, then, then why? But if there's a creator, then we can say, well, he, he likes beauty, and he knows beauty, and he share, wants to share beauty with us. Yes. Yeah. Um, it, it fits better. It makes more sense that there's so much beauty if there's a creator who made it beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean... Uh, I mean, sometimes beautiful things happen by accident. <laughs> the, some of the rock formations around here, it, from the flood, Dana's, and I glaciers and things. Those, they still come from God mm -hmm. because they wouldn't have ended up that way without. Mm -hmm. Because I daily watch, look at my coolie walls because I've got excellent views. Uh huh. Yeah. Do you? What's the name of that mountain behind me? I live up Banker Street, so that, that mountain behind me is so beautiful. It stays green most of the time. I mean, I haven't seen it when it's been dry yet because I haven't lived there that long. And the deer come down from there. Well, that's just a hill. <laughs> just the well, <laughs> is that called a hill? Because it's so, it's so different from the ones across that way. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's so. Uh, well, from a geologist's point of view, this part of the, of the valley was made by the river over a long period of time that carved out this deep V-shaped you know, valley. This part, the coulee part, with the square walls and an almost flat bottom, they say it was caused by the, a flood. Mm. They say, not Noah's flood, but <laughs> it's surely a coincidence that we have a story about a huge flood and then we have evidence of a huge flood here you know, that that car carved this u-shaped you know with almost a flat bottom you know and the, and the straight sides cut you know, through in the rocks the cliffs cut on the rocks so so that's from a geologist's point of view why why this part of the, of the columbia part of the valley is a v-shape deeper with not as steep as still steep sides but not as steep they're just, it's, this is just different looking than the mountains over there. It's yeah. It's different. It's got a lot of green on it. I like that part. Yeah. Well, and the north facing uh, doesn't dry out as fast. Oh, really? Doesn't get as much, much sunshine. sunshine. Because on the, yeah, on the other side where there's more of a south facing slope, it dries out faster. Mm -hmm. But it'll be greener earlier in the spring. Mm -hmm. And yes. yeah. And uh, so all of those those things make a difference uh, in terms of and why we have trees here but not as many over there to, <laughs> um, and uh, yeah. Do all the rest of you have deer coming where you can see them? 
Oh, I think yeah. Yeah. Everyone just, here? Yeah. Just, I really enjoy that. Yeah. Just today, there was one walking slowly across the street as I was pulling in and parked my car. And I parked right within 10 feet of it. And it, and then it decided to jump over the fence and watch me while I sit in the car. And then it went over to the bush in front of our door and started chewing on it. And then I jumped out of my car and chased it away. But... <laughs> They it and only goes look at you and keep reading. They only go over the fence into the next yard. <laughs> There's an apple tree, probably one that's a, came up from seed. Yeah. It's pretty big and it's it's a block from me and I can see it out my kitchen window. And this doe comes with her two little fawns. It's so cute to see them. Yeah, and they'll get up even the fawns will get up on their hind legs to get up into that tree and eat those apples. Yeah. 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 And they're just those little tiny green mm -hmm. apples, but they eat right. Those. Try to explain to them that if they wait a month, it'll be, or two, they'll be even uh, better tasting. But yeah, but they need food today. Right? Yeah, the grass isn't such good yeah. food anymore. Yeah. I yeah I've seen them. I think I all completely up in the tree, all four legs up in the tree, yeah, trying really? to. Oh my god. In some of these little peach apricot trees oh, up here. Good. Yeah. I Couldn't. Down to cool it down. And where they had so many petunias planted, and there, there are only a few white ones left. Oh, I haven't. I haven't asked for you. I would have, wasn't looking, but yeah. That's your right. They yeah. Beauty too. It's such a fresh. <laughs> they yeah, they, they like. Don't, they don't like the color white. They taste white. good. <laughs> they don't taste good, but yeah. the white ones may not be as safe because I can see white ones doing that. Yeah, maybe if we put some hot pepper sauce on them. I was so proud of my red and white geraniums. I just have two of them and I had them out my front porch and I thought I made such a nice statement and my daughter came in the house. She says, why did you pick those? Oh, yeah. oh no. Every single one, there was just the stems. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah they get our tools. It, it was nothing but green. So many different flowers, different shapes and different colors and well, I try to put things like that out on my deck, but I just thought they'd look so good out in my front. <laughs> yeah, and she, then she thought you left just some dead flowers out there. Well, <laughs> because we they couldn't just, see any flowers at all. Not anymore. Not after the deer had eaten them. They're huh? sure not afraid of people, are they? They walk no, around no, like no, dogs. No. Well, I mean, if they had to walk on the, side, on the sidewalk, which is right against my house to get it, oh, <laughs> they don't care. They haven't ate the um, marigolds out of the food bank. No. They don't like marigolds. Oh, no. They yeah, pitched a couple of them yeah. off they right away. Like they don't like zinnias. Yeah. My, my, and they're not eating sweet peas. Mom and Grandma used to plant marigolds around the vegetable garden to, yes. to discourage the, the deer and huh. rabbits and things. And bugs. Um, but God takes care of them. Maybe through the tr plants yes. that we don't want them to eat. But it's just kind of nice to see wild animals just walking around and not afraid of it. I mean, it's, <laughs> well, I never I have lived it. there before. My sister told me about it before I moved here. Yeah, and yeah. turkeys and... I only saw one wild turkey. That's when I was running. They'll, the they'll be in the neighborhood yeah. soon. Yeah. <laughs> and it, they seem to have come through. The, there was an awful lot of... of just spawns, you know, from last from the spring, this and this uh, summer, and it seemed like they came through the winter because we found hardly any ones that had, had died. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. Well, they must know where to go. It wasn't quite as cold last winter as some. No, not as long either. Um. All right. One last couple of verses here. Why don't you read, Pastor? You I... haven't read yet. Okay. <laughs> 32. Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to the needy. Provide yourselves with money bags that do not grow old, and a treasure in heavens that does not fail, where no thief approaches and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. That's for sure. <laughs> so... Uh, well, I mean, at first it uh, doesn't sound too bad. Fear not, little flock. But then it says, sell your possessions. And then, you're, then you go. <sighs> oh, I could give all that away. 
Well, it just says he gave us the kingdom, so we don't need any possessions. Right. As we've been saying, you can't take it with you, yeah. but we'll try to take it as far as we can. Yeah. We won't have enough till we get there. Yeah. You don't want your kids to fight over it. Wouldn't that be something? Yeah. I imagine that happens. I don't think mine will either, because I don't have that much. you got to spend it all before you go. And yeah. Most of them at this point have gotten what they all want anyways. Yeah. Uh, they don't have a new place for more stuff. Yeah. But there's some things that Tanya's mom that she that we wish that would have been nice to have, but was it worth driving it across the country yeah. and where are we going to put it? And uh, Yeah. yeah. So, said, uh, well, we'll take a picture and, and we'll, we'll remember mom. So, and then you find out that you get to the next generation and they don't know whose it was or why do we have this thing around anyways? Yeah, they, are, they don't think the way you do. Yeah. yeah. It's hard to be sentimental, though. That's my problem. I'm too sentimental. I've saved a lot of stuff, which I had to get rid of after I moved a lot of it. You know? I call this stuff and I look at it nostalgia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's right. And I keep thinking someday I'll want that or do something with it. Or <laughs> my daughter from Colorado took a plant stand that was my mom's at I Resurrection. 30 years ago, mm -hmm. and I had it in, and she just sent me a picture, it just looks great, it was just rattan, and you know, that's old for that, mm -hmm. it has to be, yeah, awful close to 100 years old, yeah, well, like, like we talked about food and drink last week, but she's loving it, and I'm so happy to have someone to have it, give thanks to God, and appreciate what he's given to you. Yes. Be content with it. You know, give honor and glory to him. Do something nice with it. Don't just leave it in the yard to, to get destroyed and fall apart. That's where I took it from, their backyard. Yeah. So. And it just been out in the rain for I don't know how many years. So it must have been awful good material to be given. Make something, you know, make something beautiful. Add, you know, your own touch of God's creativity. You know, so. Um, she put some flowers on. We have a little bit of time, not a lot, for he for Hebrews eleven. So we're we're going to be reading in Hebrews for I didn't look how far, how many weeks or so, but uh, we'll be reading in Hebrews. We're near the end of Hebrews, so maybe four or five weeks uh, in total. Hebrews eleven. Well, I've got Hebrews. Like it's uh, one, two, eight, three. Yeah. And so I. Uh, By faith, Paul there write, we go. Did Paul write Hebrews? The book of Hebrews. Um, we we don't know. There, there is. There, nobody signed it. Like most of the other, uh, most of the other epistles, were signed by Paul or or John or Peter or somebody. Um, Hebrews is not signed by by anyone in particular. Um, many people think that it was Paul because it's it's a longer epistle. It deals with some deep doctrine and some things that are very similar to what Paul wrote to. But some people think it's, it's not Paul because it's, it's also very different from the other epistles to Romans and the Corinthians, and, you know, and why might, well, who's the book of Hebrews written to? Well, what's the name? Hebrews. To the Hebrews. The Hebrews were also another name for the Jews. The Jews. Yeah. Um, so why might a letter about the Christian faith and doctrine be a little different if it's written to the Hebrews than if it's written to the Romans? They think 
different. They have different beliefs. Different, right? History. They know the Old Testament better. Um, a different culture. They, yeah, they think differently because of they were brought up in the in a certain people and place and way of thinking, taught a certain way. So, um, and and we see here it's going to go through a list of the Old Testament people. Not that Paul doesn't mention Old Testament people in the other epistles, but people who grew up. I mean, these were the stories. Now in Rome, there was lots of other stories about the founding of Rome, Romulus and Remus and the Roman gods. I mean, there's other stories too. But in, 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 for the Jews, they didn't tell those stories. They told the stories of the Old Testament. Those were their stories. Not, no Fourth of July, no George Washington. It was all Abraham and it, Cain and Abel and, and Noah and those were the story those were the stories of their life and so it would focus more on on that and connecting that to Jesus and the New Testament the New Covenant so um, so um, and I, I think I do enough talking so I don't mind letting you guys read, and then sometimes I can think better when I hear you guys reading than... I do too. <laughs> uh, so, verses 1 through 3, I don't remember, does it matter? Should we... Marilyn, would you mind starting again? Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. For by it the people of old received their con com commendation. Mm-hmm. By faith we understand that the universe was created by the word of God, so that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. Okay, this is some. These are some heavy ideas yeah. squeezed together here. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. You know, in another in another letter it says the greatest of these are uh, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. Because when we can see Jesus coming back, and when we're standing in the new creation and we can see the Heavenly Father, there's no more hope left. There's no more faith left. It's by, then it's by sight, not by faith. <laughs> so, uh, so, that's, so that ties us a little bit into Abram, believed God and God credited to him his righteousness. Um, uh, the people of old received their condom, commendations. Com what does commendation? That's not a huge word we like use too award, often. Isn't it? Award, award. Yeah. Um, nowadays, it's mo used in more informal, like the military or or police commendations for a, re a rewards for good awards for good service. Um, by faith, we understand the universe was created by the word of God. Now there again is a Hebrew, not just Hebrew, but particularly Hebrew, because in the beginning God said, "Let there be," you know, uh, where other other cultures had other kind of myths and stories about how things were organized or created, but particularly from the Hebrew, the Hebrew, God said, and things came into being out of nothing, but he, but by the command of His word and the, and His own energy, uh, the, of God. Um, okay, we're, so that's. I mean, we're jumping into the middle of Hebrews chapter eleven here, but but. Uh, yeah, it's kind of hard. Okay. Was made out of things. The things that were were not made out of things that were visible. That's what I was getting at, like creation. Right. Uh, creation, in, in a theological sense, we say ex nihilo, out of nothing, versus those who believe that it happened by accident because some rocks and things smashed together and then started planets here and there and then stars here and there and everything happened by accident versus God's word commanding things to come happen. Um, and there was nothing before he said let there be. Right. Um, 
Go Four, yeah, well, you can do one, we can do one verse at a time again. By faith, Abel offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain, through which he was commended by us righteous, God commending him by accepting his gifts, and through his faith, though he died, he still speaks. Mm -hmm. So that's why, um, that's why God preferred Abel's gift over Cain's because God, Abel offered it in faith and Cain said, well, I have to do this thing for God. This is right. Yeah, God, I, that's what dad said I have to do. You know, I don't really want to do it, but that's what we do. Uh, it's, you know, an attitude of faith, you know, and, you know, and so, all right. So a, Cain and Abel, verse five. My faith in it was taken up so that he should not see death. And he was not found because God had taken him. Now before he was taken, he was commended and had him please God. Mm -hmm. Doesn't the Bible doesn't say any, much about Enoch? But Enoch walked with God, and he was taken up into heaven. Um, and uh, so Enoch, I mean, that's not <laughs> that's not much. But his name is still remembered in history, and we will get to see him. Uh, like Adam and Eve walked with God, with God, Enoch walked with God. Adam and Eve had to die, and their bones were left on the ground in the ground. Enoch got taken up like Elijah. Um, six, right? And without faith, it is impossible to please Him, for whoever would draw near to God must believe that He exists, and that He rewards those who seek Him. Yeah. Yeah, we talk about this a lot. Sometimes, you know, J James, what's the relationship with faith and works? Without faith, you can't please God. It, but without works, you, you really don't have faith. <laughs> so works are the evidence of the faith. But if you have works without faith, that doesn't please God. So it has to, it starts, if the, the, the most important part is the faith. Um, seven... Marilyn? By faith Noah, being warned by God concerning events as yet unseen, in reverent fear constructed an ark for the saving of his household. By this he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. Mm -hmm. What an act of faith. Wow. When there had, I mean, the, the way it's written in, in Genesis, it doesn't look like there was even rain before that. The, the, it says the ground was watered by dew every every day. Mm -hmm. uh, so maybe that rainforest is what paradise will be like mm -hmm. <laughs> without poisonous snakes and things. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, what an act of faith to spend a hundred years building a boat when you haven't even, that there's going to be a, a flood of rain coming that you've never even seen rain before. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Uh, so... Abraham again. Yeah. A By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. Mm hmm. Faith yeah. is so important. Yeah. Uh, just, hey, why don't you start? He, God didn't even say, you're going over here. He just said, start walking and I'll let you know when you get there. <laughs> And then when they got there, they didn't even stay very long because, you know, they kept, you know, went on to Egypt for a little while. But, uh, um, yeah, it's not, my wife wouldn't mind traveling like that. <laughs> she, do, she does. She does, yeah, sometimes she does. And I sleep in the back and tell me when we get somewhere. <laughs> um, but you're missing the journey. You know, sometimes going somewhere, it's but sometimes your eyes won't let you yeah, stay away. Well, maybe I maybe I'm a little more anxious than I need want to admit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Got to be somewhere. I got I got, got to know where I'm going. Yeah. Uh, nine. By faith, you went to the end of the land of promise, as in a foreign land, living in tents with Isaac and Rebecca, the heirs with him of the same promise. Yeah, tents. Um, they, I mean, they spent generations living in tents. You know, the tabernacle where they worshiped God was a tent for 400 years until David built the, or Solomon built the temple. They didn't even have 
air mattresses either. No air mattresses. No. Yeah, but yeah, better better hope you have lots of blankets to lie on for padding. Or, you know, or you, we've probably all done that when our kids are little. Yeah. Stayed in a tent. We did. I mean, not too many. Hopefully, you find those places. Got an air mattress. Some soft sand and not rocks. Yeah. <laughs> and flat. Uh, <laughs> um, tents. Now um, they got these big motorhomes. Where I live, you can see the motorhomes go by. You cannot believe the money people spend on those. Oh, yeah. yeah. And and it doesn't seem to buy. I, you never know gas was high. No, we know. They have beautiful pickups. It's just amazing. Yeah. Motorhome, yeah. pickup, and boat. they worth yeah. more than our homes. Yep. Yep. It's amazing. All driving down the road, ready for an accident. Yep. Um, let's see. Tents, Isaac and Jacob, verse 10. For he was looking forward to the city that has fountains. Foundations. Oh, foundations. I like fountains better. Well, the <laughs> fountains are nice too, yeah. Yeah. It cools the air. Mm -hmm. His designer and builder is God. Yeah. He trusted that God would provide something pro permanent on a foundation of his promises. Um, okay, now again we're connecting, we're connecting real closely with Abraham. Eleven. By faith, Sarah herself received power to conceive, even when she was past the age, since she considered him faithful who had promised. Yeah. Now, again, we're just reading through Hebrews. It wasn't necessarily meant to connect with the gospel lesson and the Old Testament per se, but it does here, doesn't it? Because mm -hmm. uh, we have the promise in Genesis 15, the Old Testament, and here's a reminder of the promise and received by faith. Um, and you know, and we and we read some of that again a couple of weeks ago. Twelve. That then. Therefore, from one man and him as good as dead, were born descendants as many as the stars of heaven, and as many as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. Mm hmm. Well, that's really stressful. That's the point. <laughs> now. That was big. I was looking for that. This at this time it just says the stars in heavens. But there is another promise from God about the, the sands, grains of sand on the seashore. Um, I, I'm looking at the seashore. M, we're in, that's verse 12. M, Genesis 22, 17. Okay, and Genesis 15, 5, which we, we just read, but it's the sands on the seashore, that's, in Genesis 22, I think, but okay. Um, 13. These are all died in faith, not having received the things promised, but having seen them and greeted them from afar, and having acknowledged that they were strangers and exiles on the earth. Receive them by faith. They were saved, they're still saved by their faith. It's not a, they're saved by being sons of Abraham in the Old Testament, but now we're saved by faith. No, they were saved by faith even then because they believed God's promises looking forward to the Messiah and all the things that God was going to promise to do. Uh, and we are saved by faith. I mean, as we get further and further away, it takes more and more faith to believe that these things happen, doesn't it? There's a lot of people today who just won't believe that Jesus rose from the dead. Uh, or, or there was a flood, or that there was a man named Abraham, or um, so many of these stories. You know, it takes more and more faith the further we go forward away from them, looking even looking back. But um, yeah, it's as good. Their faith was as good then as ours is now, and so we receive the same thing in the end. Um, exiles on the earth. Um, Fourteen. For people who speak thus make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. Yeah, heaven is my home. This is one of our hymns. I'm just a stranger here. Heaven is my home. Um, Fifteen. If they had been thinking of that land from which they had gone out, they would have had opportunity to return. Yeah. Abraham could have said, hey, let's give up on this place and go back. 
go find Eliezer, let's live in Damascus or you know, somewhere else. They could have, you know, instead of trusting God, they could have used human wisdom and reason and said, we're better off somewhere else, you know, not waiting for this God promise thing to happen. That's why you've got to keep learning, keep reading, keep going to church. It's too easy to let things slide. Mm -hmm. and when things slide, they get dimmer all the time. The really, the real truth of the matter. Yeah. But when you keep reading it, you keep seeing new things, and it comes into more and more focus, like 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 studying the flowers, right? And then so you see more and more new things all the time. And uh, so, um, all right, are we at the end? 16? Dort? Okay, well, but, it, but as, excuse me, but as it is, they deserve a better country, but... Desire. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Desire, yeah. Well, desire a better country, that is a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared for them to say. <laughs> now, now that sounds kind of silly, but there's times when you're a leader or a coach of the team or something that, or the teacher, and you're you you might be a little embarrassed that you're my students because the way you behave today. <laughs> you're right. Uh, uh, I, or even your children, maybe you've had to have a moment. Where it's, I was not. Very proud to be your parent today. You know the way you were behaving and the way you treated this other person or something. Uh, but uh, God was not ashamed to be called their God and our God. He has prepared for them a city, a New Jerusalem. Um, yeah, heavenly, pure love. You know for us. Um, so. Well, there's lots we could talk about with Hebrews, but uh, but we're out of time, so um, or at least out of our scheduled time. <laughs> Dinners and other things to get to. <laughs> it's nice to be with you, ladies. Thank you. It's nice to have you with I us. Are you I'm glad to be here. Learn a lot. Mm -hmm. The older I get, the more I learn. Mm -hmm. You never get too old to learn, do you? No, we don't. What I like about the readings on Sundays is they all tie together mm -hmm. yeah. and we don't realize that when we haven't read no, we through don't. them. No, we it don't. takes that extra time it to go through it. it. Yeah, it, mm -hmm. they're all tied together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even even though, like I was saying, Hebrews wasn't, I mean, we're going to be reading Hebrews 11 and next month, week something from Hebrews 12 and next week from Hebrews 13. So, but it, the, well, God's way, things all fall into place. And especially this week, we see this definite strong connection of faith and Abraham and trusting God, you know, and uh, yeah, it's nice. I like that Bible passage. It says, all things work together for good mm -hmm. for them that love God or to them that love God. And are called according to his yeah. purposes. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's. Yeah. That's, so, one, that's a good one to cling to because when things happen, you think, oh, well, why is this happening? But then you have to remember that, you know, there's a reason mm -hmm. for all this. Yeah. Yeah. It's and, hard to believe that sometimes, but well, you know, if you're a Christian, it's yeah. a lot easier to believe it. When you're in hospice yeah. and you're yeah. getting close to death, and why am I still alive? Mm -hmm. Or why am I not healthy? Why am I stuck in mm -hmm. this? The worst, you know, the worst condition. You know, I, I could either be healthy or dead. One or the other, Lord. You know, but don't leave me here. Suspended. <laughs> uh, why am I you know, in this situation? Or, um, or even some of the elderly people, not in hospice, but still feel weak and can't do everything they want to do. And, and it's quality of life at this time, not quantity. Yeah, Lord, why am I still here? And yeah, witnessing to... When you've outlived everybody in your family. Yeah. I yeah. That. I have that too. too. Yeah. But I just always wonder why does God keep me alive that somebody's I don't like we're asking someone that I'm sick. Why He still got work for you to do, right? Yes. Yeah. Maybe to irritate my kids, he still has to my family. <laughs> yeah, stay around to do that. <laughs> well, we don't always know. No, I know. Even in hindsight, we don't I mean we we like to think that maybe in twenty years or so we'll understand why. Uh, but uh, 
but we never know for sure. Hopefully, it's to bring the rest of his family closer to God uh, going through this. You guys know grieving and loss, um, oftentimes we bring us closer to God when we trust in God. Or if you get angry, can you can run away and drive yourself away from God, but, uh, but uh, hopefully it'll bring them closer to Him. I never felt angry when I lost Bill, never. Well, when you trust in God, it's, yeah, it's easier to not get angry, to know that there's a, some sort of a time and purpose. Yeah. When you and don't... He was a believer, so that really helped, didn't it? Yeah, we'll see him again. Yeah. When you don't trust in God, it's easier to get angry because it's not what I want. Uh, I want him to stay alive. I want him, you know, or her, or, you know, I want this person to do what I want yeah. and be what I want. Yeah. Good luck with that. Mm hmm. <laughs> Can't even add one hour to your life by worrying. <laughs> so, good. I think yeah. worry will take time away from your life, don't you guys? Mm hmm. What's that? I, I think worrying. Makes, oh, yes. makes you live a lot less. Longer. Yeah. You know, I think it's hard on your body. You get worried. sick. Yeah. Sick to you your heart, sick to your, your stomach. Especially when you can't do anything about anything. That's what. Yeah. Yeah, you don't have any quality. <clears throat> oh. The doctor so. asked me this week, how long do you want to live? Oh, what a pain to ask. I told him until the good Lord took me home. Yeah. What did he say about that? Well, he said the same thing I said. Quality or quality over quantity. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So he didn't... And I don't know if that's a good, but that's exactly... Okay, so you, you weren't sure if he was asking if... Well, I think that's what, that's what he said, quality over quantity. Yeah. So that's what he was getting at. Right. Some people think... I mean, so he changed... Some of my kids, okay. according to my age, whereas the doctor I've been having gave them to me because it was the thing to do. Right, yeah. I mean, I don't know. The Lord has taken care of it. Some of the side effects from medication can be... Bad. Yeah, difficult. So, okay. Well, yeah, so it, might, it means that you maybe you won't live as long, but you'll be more comfortable while you're... I will be able to praise God while I'm here. Yeah. So, yeah. Praise the Lord. It's for a doctor who, who's working with you. Yeah. I say it often. And 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 I, we've seen doctors who, who have trouble giving up because they've been trained to save lives and even, mm -hmm. even if somebody has a do not resuscitate, does not want to be resuscitated and the doctor says, but... I can, and it, and I think it's not that bad, and I think I can, yeah. I got all those papers signed. In yeah. But then they might not fall anyhow. Well, let's, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully they do. Yeah, I, I think our hospital tries hard to respect our local yeah. people, yeah. But sometimes <laughs> they get caught up. If it's if in if when something's happening, they get caught up with their training to save the life and not check the file for the paperwork. So, but yeah. Bill was pronounced dead before he left the house. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't official. It was by the chief of police. They brought him to the hospital. And anyway, we trying to revive him. Yeah. It was grotesque. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I didn't. I had. I says, "What are we doing? I don't know." Yeah. Well, you have to say. And then finally they said, "Well, we don't know." And finally they said, "You have to tell us if we can pull up one of the hardest thing in the world to do." Yeah. Oh, man, they make you do that. Oh, man. Yeah. yeah. And all his papers were in the hospital, and I says, "Didn't you?" I says, "Well, didn't you read the papers?" No, we didn't have time. Yeah. And I, that's, I was very unhappy with that. Yeah. How long ago was that that he died? Well, nine years ago. Mm -hmm. No, it was, Is it, yeah, nine. Could be, yeah. Has it been that long? Yeah. Yeah, it's been nine. I've been here. Time starts to 
I gotta try to think through how long has it been. But uh But I mean things like that are very hard. Yeah. Oh, Lord God, Heavenly Father, help to grant us faith to trust in you through all the troubles in life, uh, to not be anxious, and to, uh, to help, us, help us to make good and godly decisions that, that uh, we can give witness about your good news and about Jesus and, uh, and, our, and our salvation in you for for all who, uh, who trust in you. Pray all these things in Jesus' name and as he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You know, that's one part of the Lord's prayer.